just noticed I can't really open my right eye by itself. Hmm. Hey, welcome to the fourth installment of the uh, just straight up, here's a few lessons, try this series. I'm pretty sure that's the official name. Um, I, I, get, I do get a lot of um, questions at No Trouble with regard to um, how do I actually apply the stuff I'm working on. Um, and I mean, there's as many answers to that question as there are um, grains of sand on the beach, let's say. <clears throat> but I will show you how I, um, I was going to say how I practice incorporating the things that I work on um, in a meaningful, musical, more real world kind of way. Um, but if I'm being honest with y'all, it's really uh, what I was thinking of doing right now is really just how I keep myself interested, <laughs> how I keep engaged with the material. Um, because for me, and I've said this before, um, bass is a team sport. And, and I, mean, I don't mean to, it's not a, like a thing against solo bass players because uh, I, I, I love it. Um, it's wild what people are doing with the instrument. But for me, I, I've never been interested in playing by myself. It always, I just get bored to tears when I'm practicing. Um, and uh, it's for me, it's all about band connection and song. Uh, conveyance um, so the way that pretty since, since I was pretty young the way I kept myself engaged um, with seemingly tedious material like scales and uh, scalar exercises and patterns and modes was by trying to uh, make actual music out of it and have fun with it so I thought I would take everything that I've talked about in the past few weeks and kind of pull it together um, <clears throat> into um, kind of me just noodling, but trying very consciously to use the things that we've talked about, um, which in includes percussive right hand technique. All the different rudiments we talked about, three, four, five stroke rolls and stuff like that. All all the ones we talked about were specific to percussive strikes and plucks. Um, and then we did, it included a lot of, uh, essentially a lot of mole stuff. And all the modes up and down. And last week we covered um, double stop exercises and different intervals and so on and so forth. Um, if you haven't watched them, I'd encourage you to, to dip back um, a week, two, or three and watch those videos if you're curious as to any part of what I'm about to do. <clears throat> so, how does one keep oneself engaged in uh, such tedious circumstances? Um, nowadays, I mean, back in the day, I used to just uh, either grab songs and play and try and play the scales and things along with songs which is still 100 percent valid um or uh find little uh, keyboard loops and things like that i have to keep my computer screen on so i stay front lit um or uh you know any number of things i would just try and find things or record myself you know i mean back in the day it was like record myself on a tape grab a blank tape and record myself just playing um, some kind of drone and then play put it in the tape player play along to that um, then graduated to we have loopers and I loop station things for now now we just have uh, computers in our pockets and a million great apps um, that oh yeah there it goes is my uh, most used music folder on my phone. Um, specifically, iReal Pro, iTabla Pro, and that um, Dr. B. Tot and the Percussion app. I mean, well, all of those apps I use quite a bit. For now, I am going to 
make most use of the percussion app that was right in the middle of that screen there, which has a million percussion grooves and it's actually very cool because you can pull up the notation. There's some videos of the guys playing. You can change the tempos. It has just a, a massive list of different styles um, organized by region. Brazil, Peru, West Africa, Cuba. Um, I just grabbed, I went to Cuba Popular Music and grabbed a basic Afrobeat. Um, not Afrobeat. <laughs> like African. Basically basic Afro-Cuban groove. And on this app, you can actually mute different instruments. You know, you can just have clave, just clave, and guero, or everything. So I thought I'd start with there, and then maybe move on to iTabla Pro and play with some different rhythms that way. Um, these are how I keep myself engaged. With iTabla Pro, you can actually set up a drone and play along to the drone. Um, I tend to practice scales and stuff with iTabla Pro. Um, because of the drone, and then I can also have fun with the rhythm because there's just a million different um, uh, uh, tabla grooves organized by number of beats, including um, odd groupings like seven and a half, which is really 15, eight, um, and stuff like that. Maybe I'll do a seven and a half thing. That's fun. Everybody loves seven and a half. Um, so here I am diddling about to a basic Afro-Cuban groove, um, but very much focused on, <clears throat> we've been doing everything in C major, so woohoo, C major, um, playing in C major, thinking of all of those things we talked about. Muted strikes, playing with rhythm and subdivisions. I've done a lot of other things on subdivisions here, um, so that shouldn't be entirely new for most of you diehard readers. And, um, incorporating those scalar patterns, grabbing double stops up and down, scales and broken intervals, arpeggios. So let's just see what happens. Wish me luck. Hopefully that's not too loud. So first I'll play with rhythm. Mimic a little bit. Three, um, open, hammer, pluck. Um, 
through a melodic pattern. thirds but in tenths um, and thirds <laughs> thirds and broken thirds just kind of having fun with it trying to use it in you know in a broader context not just a pattern but use it to try and spark in a melodic idea <laughs> So you get the idea. I was pretty, pretty loose with it. I, I wasn't being as strict as I might be if I was actually practicing. And um, honestly, it's a little weird to do that in front of a, a camera. Um, you feel pressure to do something neat. <laughs> um, I don't know if any of that counted as neat, but um, I was very much trying to use the percussive three finger technique um, while literally just thinking major scale patterns that I could play around with. Um, so um, I wouldn't only practice like that, but I, I used to, uh, when I was kind of devising practice routines for myself, once I really got serious about it, um, I used to quite often set aside, you know, I might spend half an hour on reading, 20 minutes on rhythm, 20 minutes on scales, and then maybe leave myself uh, 20, 30 minutes to just kind of free play because um, it's important to just explore with reckless abandon you know a childlike wonder if you will um, but honestly as, as corny as that might sound it's it's 
that's really how we should be approaching the instrument. Um, you know, it's, we're in a constant state of discovery, and we need to, uh, you know, every once in a while, you know, you should just turn it upside down and try and play it and see what happens. You know, just keep messing with it. Um, bang on it. Do whatever you want to do. But I, I used to like to set up something to play against and just let myself, you know, give myself a basic framework, a key. I'm going to play in this key and then just let loose and see what happens. And you usually wind up discovering something kind of interesting along the way. And when something grabs you, then it's a good idea to go, ah, that was cool. Let me figure out different ways I could use that and turn that into something. Um, so, boom, there's one idea. Let me mess around a little bit in um, iTabla Pro. We'll do the same thing, but in 7.5, 15.8. Um, I tend to feel it slow 4, fast 7. Um, that's how I generally feel 15. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. However you want to count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One. And this groove. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One. on a drone again this is iTobla Pro that's a little fast is that too fast let's put it at 140 let's put it at 130 <laughs> um, I set it for C again just the I don't always practice in C, but I tend to teach in C because I think that's a good place to a good place to start when you learn material. Um, so most of my videos tend to be like, all right, C major, here we go. So apologies for the uh, overabundance of C major. Like a sixteenth note too. 
Open hammer, pluck, pluck, pluck. Thumb, hammer, one, two, one. So it's a five stroke pattern. And triplets. That's why it was so weird. <laughs> um, five strokes, eighth note triplets. In 15. Great. Setting myself up for failure. You get the idea. I don't mean to just uh, noodle on obsessively, but I kind of wanted to, and I was intentionally doing things that I might not be able to do all that well, not playing pre-planned stuff that I knew I could just shred. Um, I wanted to uh, hopefully give you guys a little bit of a real world example of me um, letting myself operate with freedom within the parameters of everything we've talked about so far. So when I kind of free play and have fun with it, that's exactly how I do that. Um, and then when I latch on to something that's either kind of cool or throws me off or I don't even know what I'm doing, but it, you know, perked my ear, then I like go, oop, what was that? I go, ah, five stroke fingering pattern in eighth note triplets in an odd meter um, to boot. Uh, so let me figure out some different ways to use that. Let me see if I can actually feel that turn around and come back, you know, on the one properly um, without kind of guessing. Um, so, you know, you find something you like and you take it apart and figure out what it was. So I hope, uh, I hope, I hope you all thought that was a worthwhile, uh, worthwhile way to spend your time. Um, so I'll probably get into some more rhythmic, um, percussive, technical stuff um, next week, but we'll see. Um, again, if you have any questions about anything, please hit me at askdamian at notrouble.com, D-A-M-I-A-N. Um, there's links in No Trouble on, on, my, uh, on my page there. And, uh, and yeah, help keep this help keep this column going. And I, I would love to uh, just respond to more questions. But I also like doing these videos. So if you want me to expand upon any aspect of any of these videos, or you have a, a question regarding any of it, um, if you have some questions about anything regarding any of these videos that I've done, or any past columns, or any new stuff. Um, but if you know, especially with these videos, if you have like, how do I? What's this? And could you do it this way? Whatever. Um, hit me in the comments or shoot me an email and one way or another whether it's a via video via typed article or via email directly if it's not something that's maybe big enough to turn into an article i'll probably just hit you back directly um, one way or another i'll get back to you and uh, thank you all for helping to make this column what it is and thank you for taking the time to check out me noodling and trying to show you a thing or two here and there um, and y'all take care talk to you soon